Birds fly in formation to save energy by taking advantage of induced lift from one another. So the question is, can we do the same with drones? Studies suggest formation flight can reduce energy use dramatically by even up to 70%. I have already shown path planning for these types of swarms in a previous video. Now we'll take it further by building a physics-based simulation from scratch. We'll model a single airplane's dynamics, design controllers for the followers, and scale it up to five drones flying together to illustrate just how scalable this concept can be. By the end, you'll understand the physics, the control strategy I've implemented, and whether or not this idea is practically scalable. Alright, let's build the sim. Before we get to formations, we need to understand the basics. So we'll start by modeling a single airplane's dynamics from scratch, giving us full control and understanding of the physics. The model tracks position and velocity in the world frame but we use a separate wind frame to compute the aerodynamic forces, primarily lift, drag, and side force, using coefficients scaled by dynamic pressure to get them in dimensional form, and then converted to the body frame. We'll also add a stabilizing pitching moment, a rolling moment, and damping moments based on angular rates. Pilot inputs are modeled as throttle, producing forward thrust, plus roll, pitch, and yaw moments. Once the forces and moments are calculated in the body frame, they're rotated into the world frame and integrated forward in time with a discrete fourth order Runge Kutta method. With all of this in place, we have our first real time simulation written in Python put together. I also added a trail to better visualize the aircraft's trajectory. With the simplified aircraft dynamics in place, we can add a second aircraft to track the leader. But before we get to implementing a controller, we need to add some simple aerodynamic interaction effects between the lead and the follower, since that's what we're ultimately interested in exploiting. To do this, I simply add a lift force and a roll moment to the follower that grows as a function of the distance to the desired position, which we'll say is around here. Later, we'll evaluate whether the follower uses less thrust than the leader once it begins benefiting from this induced lift. Now that we've got our plant put together, I'll implement a PID controller to reduce the distance between the follower and the leader. The error is defined as the distance between the follower's position and its desired position. This error is first calculated in the world frame, and it is then converted to the follower's body frame. In practice, we wouldn't have perfect state information for both aircraft, but we'll assume it here for simplicity. Along with position error, I also use velocity error, the difference between the follower's velocity and the leader's. Strictly speaking, the follower's required velocity is a bit different because of its offset, but for the wide turns we care about, that difference should be negligible. Finally, to correct long-term drift, we include the accumulated position error. Each of these terms, position, velocity, and integral error, is scaled by its own set of gains, P, D, and I. By combining these terms, the PID controller outputs a vector that we use to drive the pilot commands. Roll and yaw come from the Y component. That is to say, if we're left or right of the target, we should roll and yaw towards it. Pitch comes from the Z component, since we want to pitch up or down depending on whether we need altitude. Throttle depends on both X and Z, because being behind or below means we need more thrust to catch up. We then scale each command with an extra set of gains for further flexibility. This PID controller is rather simple, but effective as a starting point. More advanced methods like feed forward could be added later. For now, we'll move on to gain tuning. We'll have the lead aircraft fly in a circle with straight segments in between. This gives the controller a richer challenge than if it were to instead just fly straight and level. Tuning the system wasn't super easy. But after some manual trial and error, I found some set of gains that work reasonably well. In the simulation, you can see the red follower closing the gap with the leader. It takes some time to settle into the desired position, but once it does, it tracks the target point quite well. In theory, the follower should need less thrust to hold position compared to the leader. That is, after all, what we're most interested in here. Letting the leader fly straight and level and comparing thrust outputs, we find the follower indeed requires less thrust. The actual values here aren't super important since I guessed a lot of the lift, drag, and other coefficient parameters. But the trends do matter, and we see that we indeed use less throttle, which is pretty cool and satisfying to see, especially since all I've done is given the follower extra lift. 
Now, we'll really push the limits and see if we can get five aircraft flying together in formation. To do this, I simply scale up the earlier code. The aircraft fly in order, the leader in black followed by red, green, blue, and finally orange. Since the black leader follows smooth, prescribed inputs, its immediate follower in red tracks it quite well. But as we move farther down the chain, tracking errors compound, making the last orange aircraft's job the hardest. It must follow the blue aircraft, which already carries accumulated error. That's why we see the orange follower flying more erratically than the others. There is certainly more to explore here, and of course, doing it in reality with real model airplanes would present new challenges. But this simulation serves as a great starting point and is an effective strategy to test out different ideas and understand all of the physics that need to be considered. Iterating on the control strategy in reality would be much harder and take a lot more time, but would also be super cool to do sometime in the future. Alright, thanks for watching, bye.